This is Private Jessup from the hit game Borderlands 2. He's mainly known for standing around in the hub town doing nothing for the entire game and then getting blown up in the DLC. So naturally, I made a 10-part series chronicling his sad, sad life. But if you haven't seen it, then all you have to know is that he's very dead. I made that series over four years ago at this point, so I don't think we're going to be seeing the return of Private Jessup anytime soon. Wake up, Private Jessup! Who am I in my life? Don't you recognize my voice, old friend? It's me, your old boss, Mr. Tedior. Oh, God, Tedior, what do you want this time? I've brought you back from the dead because I have a job for you. Okay, fine, I'll do it. Whatever it is, I'll do it. But then can I please go back to being dead? Yes, yes. If that's what you want, then sure. All right, what do you want? I need you to attend the Hollywood premiere of the Borderlands movie. Oh. Do I have to? Yes, I'm afraid so. It is vitally important for you to watch the movie first and then tell me if it is worth buying tickets for. All right, here we go. Big thanks to Gearbox for inviting Oboe Shoes Games out to LA for the world premiere of the Borderlands movie. Unfortunately, he was busy that week attending a Bionicle convention, which sounds like a joke, but it's not, so instead he gave his invite to me, Private Jessup. Annoyingly, Tedior resurrected me across the country from the premiere, so I had to travel all the way there and back on my own dime. I wish I could say the Patreon money is going to a good cause, but it went to this, so... Sorry. After landing in LA, I had a few hours to kill before the premiere started, so I decided to go to the city's most world-renowned landmark. That's right, I'm talking about Funko Pop Land. I gotta say, it's pretty horrifying. At least they had FNAF. <laughs> I also said hi to PETA, and then I found Weezer at Amoeba, and you know I had to try In-N-Out, and I gotta say, I was not impressed. Sorry, West Coast, but this burger was Wendy's tier. When I was done eating, I donned my armor and began walking to the theater. Here we are in beautiful Hollywood, California, for the premiere of the Borderlands movie. Mr. Tedior has sent me out here on a mission to go see this film. Uh, been touring Hollywood all day. Pretty impressive, pretty impressive. Reminds me a lot of Sanctuary because of all the trash everywhere. One guy stopped me and asked me if I was a stormtrooper. I told him no, I was from Borderlands, and he said that was dope. Another guy stopped me and asked me if I was Deadpool. I said no, I was from Borderlands, and he didn't know what Borderlands was. Uh, over there we have Poppy Playtime. There he is. Shout out to Poppy Playtime. Video game represent- yeah, it's, the, it's that, yeah. That's Poppy's Playtime, my favorite game, Private Jessup approved game. When I got to the theater, I had to debase myself by telling the guard I was an influencer. And then he let me into the influencer line. I was told to stand behind a guy who was quite possibly the best dressed man I have ever seen. We struck up a conversation. He asked me if I was from the game. I said yes. He said he'd never played a Borderlands game. I told him they were pretty good. He asked me if they were like Elden Ring. I said no. After a few minutes, we were ushered onto the yellow carpet. It's yellow because Claptrap. On the yellow carpet, there were a few activities that were part of the brand activation. I made the Crimson Raiders proud by dunking the Psycho, but then I made them not so proud by only scoring a slimy snail on the Psycho strength test. Uh. Standing just out of frame was a group of fellow Borderlands content creators, and every single one of them was stronger than me. One of the staff noticed I was disheartened by my lack of strength and gave me some Tiny Tina bunny ears to cheer me up. They made me feel a little better, but then disaster struck when my pauldron, which had not been made with swinging a heavy hammer in mind, fell clean off of my shoulder. Unfortunately, my high-quality Atlas armor has broken. That's what happens when you make a cosplay out of hot glue. So uh, no more shoulder for me, I guess. Clap Trap noticed this and came over to make fun of me. Don't worry though, I got the last laugh when he broke down later. I was resigned to just sadly carry around my pauldron for the rest of the night, but one of the Gearbox people had actually brought tape in anticipation of this exact scenario. I could not believe how clutch this was. Sorry, Randy, but I have a new favorite Gearbox employee. Thanks for the picture though. To be clear, nobody at the event knew that Private Jessup was going to show up. I kept my costume a secret until I arrived, and when everyone I talked to asked asked me who I was, and I said, Private Jessup. Most people were extremely confused and just went, huh. 
That's cool. Jolt's dude and K6 both got it immediately though, so I'm not saying the event was full of fake fans, but also that guy in line had never played Borderlands before. Soon the theater doors opened, and I went inside to get out of the sun for a bit and grab a drink. But when I tried to go back outside to where everything was, I was told by the door guard that there was no re-entry, and that if I went outside, I wouldn't be allowed back in for the movie. I was now trapped inside the theater with three hours to go before the movie started. Determined to make the most of this unfortunate situation, I found an abandoned corner and did this. Hey everybody, Captain Amanda here with a review of the official Borderlands soda. Okay, and if you are getting a pretty strong Diet Coke taste from the soda, on the Captain Amanda rating chart, I'm going to give it a 7.5. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. At least the lobby had some of the film's costumes on display. I made sure to salute my brave commander, even though I know that was not Kevin Hart's actual costume because it was way too tall. I, of course, got some Tannis E from Tannis, and then I made sure to give old Lilith a taste of her own medicine. At this point, there was little left for me to do than to just go to my seat and try to chill out until the movie started. Unfortunately, chilling out was made impossible by the presence of DJ Triple XL and his obnoxiously loud music. At one point, DJ Triple XL announced that if you posted a selfie of yourself and showed it to him, he would give you some free Borderlands swag. However, I learned that nobody was actually bothering to check your phone, so I simply walked up to the DJ booth and without even looking at my phone, a disgruntled iHeartRadio employee handed me a Borderlands tie-dye shirt and a Tiny Tina button. I pinned the button onto my chest armor and also relocated my pauldron onto my leg because it kept poking the guy I was sitting next to. Sorry about that. About an hour before the movie was set to begin, the cast showed up outside and walked the yellow carpet. Everybody who was still outside got to take some cool pictures, but since I was stuck inside the theater, I had to make do with DJ Triple XL's Borderlands Trivia Challenge. There were three questions, and I transcribed them word for word for your amusement. See if you can get them right. Question one. What is the name of the Borderlands character who has a powerful death trap robot? The answer is Gage. Question two. What is the name of the rare and powerful weapon that can only be obtained from a specific side quest in Borderlands 2? And yes, that does describe most of the legendary weapons in the game, but DJ Triple XL was looking for a specific one, and to add insult to injury, he never announced what the answer was, so I guess we'll never know. Question 3. In Borderlands 2, what is the name of the hyper-intelligent AI that offers missions to the player? This one is actually pretty obvious. The answer, of course, is Claptrap, yes, Claptrap, not Angel. Uh? I hope you've been enjoying this 10 minute loop of Borderlands movie graphics that was playing on the screen the entire time I was there. It was mostly just repurposed shots from the movie, but there was some stuff that wasn't in the final film, like Christmas caroling psychos, which is mildly interesting, I guess. Even more interesting was this watermark that somebody forgot to remove before exporting their video file. Cut them some slack though, they only had eight months to notice it. Finally, the movie was about to begin and some guy from Lionsgate gave a boring speech about nothing, and then Eli Roth came up and introduced the cast. All the stars walked out onto the stage, took a single photo, and then got the heck out of there as fast as they could before the movie started. The good thing about going to a world premiere is that they don't show 30 minutes of trailers before the movie, it just starts immediately. The bad thing about that is that the Borderlands movie then started immediately. You've probably already heard that the movie is not good, but I am here to tell you that yes, the movie is not good. Lilith starts the movie as the best bounty hunter in the galaxy, and ends the movie as the best bounty hunter in the galaxy, but also, spoiler, she has firehawk powers too. I don't know why she started out so strong, because it gave her character nowhere to go. I mean, she starts the movie with the infinity pistol. Like, why not have her start the movie with a crappy gun, and then she has a little moment like, oh, this gun is crappy, and later she finds the infinity pistol as loot, and it's a fun moment. You know, kind of like the game Borderlands. This whole franchise is about cool guns, but for the movie, they said, what if instead Instead of that, it was about how when Lilith was a kid, her mom died in a sad flashback scene. There's a lot more to talk about with this movie, but I'm gonna need like a five hour long Borderlands farming stream for that. So for now, I'll just say that one thing I did like was there was a part where they had to wear holographic masks and the visual effects for those masks looked very cool. So there you go. It wasn't all bad, just everything except for those masks was bad. Sitting a few rows behind me was a Lionsgate guy who was talking to the woman next to him before the movie started about all the work he did for the film. When the credits finally 
rolled. He asked her, well, honest thoughts. What'd you think? She paused for a second before answering with, uh, I thought it was fun. Uh, it had some good moments, I think. I haven't played the game, so I don't know about any of that stuff, but yeah. I've heard some brutal movie reviews before, but yikes, that was bad. As we all left the theater, Randy was standing in the lobby asking people if they were fooled by the siren fakeout because, spoilers, the movie makes you think that Tiny Tina's a siren, but then it was really Lilith the whole time. He was saying that they really tried their best to fool people into thinking Lilith wasn't the siren, and if a single person was actually fooled by that, then the human race is doomed. As I turned and walked away from the glitz and the glamour of my first and very likely last Borderlands movie premiere event, I tried to think of a nice, succinct phrase to sum up my thoughts on the movie for Mr. Tedior. It sucked. I mean, the experience of going to the movie was okay. I got to meet Randy. That was fun. I got complimentary popcorn, which was a little bit stale by the time I got around to eating it. But a lot of stuff in the movie just made no sense. Like, Tiny Tina started out in the movie as being a prisoner. And then by the end of the movie, she liked bombs a lot, and they never really explained like how she got into bombs. So I think the whole Tiny Tina bomb thing did not work at all and was very stupid. Time to make it rain with your body parts. Oh no! Well, Jessup, how was the movie? That bad, huh?